بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام تجويد the art of reciting the Quran In a very beautiful hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم drew forth a parable drew forth an image describing for us the status of the Quran It's a very beautiful parable here The Prophet وسلم says that Allah has set forth an example, a method, a parable There is a road which leads straight to the destination. It leads to where you want to go. However, on either side of the road, there is a wall. And in this wall, there are doors with curtains hanging. Curtains hanging from these doors. From the remote end of the road, in other words, from the front of the road, there is a voice that is calling out, Proceed, come forth, come straight. And don't turn to any side. And whenever someone tries to lift up the curtain, then another voice calls, but this voice calls from above. above. And that voice says, Do, Beware, careful. Don't lift the curtain or else you will be lured inside. Don't lift the curtain or else you will fall through into the door. This is the example of a straight path and it has walls on either side. At the front of the straight path, there is a voice that calls you, guiding you where to go. You know where the path is. If you And there are curtains hanging to try to divert you. When you try to divert into these curtains, then a voice calls up from above and it warns you, don't do so, careful. If you open this door, you will fall into it. Then the Prophet explained, what is this? He said, the straight path is Islam. This is Islam. The voice that calls from the end of the road is the Qur'an. It is the Qur'an that guides you in your life. It will show you the Sirat al-Mustaqim. It will show you the path to Jannah. And the walls are the hudud of Allah. The walls are the limits that Allah has set. This is allowed and this is not allowed. So whoever transgresses from what is allowed into what is not allowed, he has gone into one of these curtains. And the heart or the, uh, the uh, voice that calls from above this is the monitor that Allah has placed in the heart of every believer. In English we call it a conscience. Every single mu'min, when he does something wrong, he knows he's doing something wrong. And he feels guilty for it. This is that conscience. This is the heart. This is the monitor that Allah has placed in the heart of every believer. Beautiful parable here, showing us the status and the blessedness of this holy book of Islam, the book of the Quran, the speech of Allah. If we wish to be guided, all we have to do is to read it, listen to it and obey it and we will be guided to the straight path to Jannah. Today's topic of Tajweed involves the solar and lunar letters Al-Huruf Al-Shamsiya wa Al-Huruf Al-Qamariya Now you will ask what has astronomy got to do with Tajweed? Absolutely nothing. However, there are certain uh, words or letters, excuse me, that are called solar letters and others are called lunar letters. Why and what is the purpose of this? Well, let us look at the Arabic words and you will understand what I'm talking about. Notice when I say ashams, which is the Arabic word for sun, where is the lamb? Silent. Silent. It's not pronounced, right? Ashams. However, when I say al qamar, the Arabic word for moon, can you hear the lamb? Yes, this is exactly what the letters that are solar and lunar are. Okay, there's nothing to do with the sun and moon, but it's just that the Arabic word for ashams, the lamb is silent, and the Arabic word for al qamar, the lamb is not silent. Therefore, there are a number of letters in the Arabic language that when this alif lam, this alif lam in English we call it the participle, the definite participle, it makes something one. Rajul, it makes something unique. Rajul means a man. Ar-Rajul means the man, a particular specific man. So this alif lam is called the uh, definite participle. When it occurs in any noun, then you look at the first letter of that noun. If the first letter is from the letters of the sun, you call it, al huruf al-shamsiyah, this means that the lam will be what? Silent. Silent. And if the first word of that noun is of the letters of the moon, then the lamb will be pronounced. Okay? Now, uh, there, there is a simple phrase that the uh, scholars have derived for the Qamari letters. And anything that's not in this phrase, any letter that's not in this phrase, you can consider it to be a solar letter. Okay? Uh, it's just Hamza, Ba, Ghain, Ha, Jim, K, 
كاف واو خاء فاء عين قاف يا ميم and ها and the scholars have mixed them all up to get this phrase here ابغي حجك وخف عقيمه Okay, it doesn't mean anything, it's just that you're supposed to say this over and over again until you memorize the uh, Qamari or the solar letters, okay? Notice that this only applies to the Alif Lam. It doesn't mean that any Lam that occurs before any of the letters will be silent. No, only the Alif Lam that occurs before them, uh, the Alif Lam participle, only this Lam, not any Lam in the Quran, only this particular Lam, it will be considered to be silent. So, you have to memorize this. This is absolutely essential that uh, you memorize these uh, letters because if you don't memorize them, you're going to make mistakes in when to make the lamb silent and when to pronounce it. Once you memorize it, anything not on the, this list is considered to be of the solar letters. And actually, alhamdulillah, most of the Muslims, when they start learning to recite the Quran, they uh, are taught this from a very early age, so they know it. And after a while, it becomes second nature. It is something which is uh, ingrained in a person who uh, learns how to uh, read Arabic. So alhamdulillah, this is not a difficult rule. This is a very easy one. And we'll try to implement it along with all of our previous rules as well. Remember, we're going to build from our episodes. So we'll try to implement this along with the other rules in reciting Surah Al-Shams, if you will recite along with me. Surah Al-Shams wa Shamsi wa Duhaha Which is Surah number 91 in the Quran Okay, Surah number 91 A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والشمس وضحاها. Okay, what is the alif lam here? Obviously, from the very word itself, solar. And in fact, the sun itself is والشمس. Okay. والقمر إذا تلاها. والقمر إذا تلاها. Okay, we have here which word now? القمر. So again, we have the moon, the the lunar letter, which is which is the قاف over here. So we pronounce the lam. Okay, notice here now the Qamara, okay. The we find al qa al qa. The qaf here we find it to be heavy. Remember we covered this before. What type of letter is qaf? A heavy letter. It is of the letters of tafkhim. Therefore, when we say qama al qamar al qamar, we notice there's a difference between the fatha of the qaf and the fatha of the mim. The fatha of the qaf is heavier because the qaf is of the letters of tafkhim. We did this in an earlier episode. We don't say wal qamari wal qama wal qamari, okay. والنهار إذا جلاها والنهار إذا جلاها. Okay, we have an nahar. Is noon one of the qamari letters? Look over here. Do we see a noon? No. No. Therefore, we pronounce it. And we, excuse me, we consider it to be silent. Therefore, how do we pronounce it? والنهار. We didn't say والنهار. We drop the lam because it is a Solar letter. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا Okay, in this case, the uh, lamb of the al-layl, it has a shadda on it. Uh, so you, some of you might get confused, but it is in fact the alif lamb participle followed by the word layl. But since it is a lamb in and of itself, then you put a shadda on it and you pronounce it. Uh, so you uh, pronounce the lamb immediately. Wallayli. Okay. Wassamai wa ma banaha. Wassamai wa ma banaha. Okay, what is it over here? The solar letter. Because the scene is not of the, of the lunar letters. Therefore, we drop the lamb and we say wassamai. وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا Okay, in Al-Ard, what letter are we looking at? The lunar letter, which is a Hamza, the first of our lunar letters here. The first of our lunar letters is a Hamza. Okay, so we have وَالْأَرْضِ We pronounce the 
لام ونفس وما سواها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها قد أفلح من زكاها Okay, what rule of tajweed did we study in taqwaha and qad aflaha and qad khaba? Qalqala. Very good. Uh, we have here a silent qaf in the taqwaha. What level of qalqala will this be? It's the weakest. It's the weakest level. It's the weakest because it occurs in the middle of a word. Okay. Qad aflaha, what type of qalqala would be? A little bit higher than that because it occurs at the end of a word. And similar with wa qad khaba man dasaha. Notice here the khaba and dasaha. Once again, notice the tafkhim and the tarqiq mm-hmm. on the alifs. Khaba. Mm-hmm. Notice the alif, how heavy, heavy it is. Heavy. Why? Because the kha is of the letters of tafkhim or heaviness. Heavy. And the saha, light. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, the alif here is light because the scene is not of the heavy letters. Kathabat thamud bi taghwaha. Kathabat thamud bi taghwaha. إذ بعث أشقاها إذ بعث أشقاها Once again in the أشقاها we have the heavy and the light versus in تغواها we only had it light فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقيا فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم. Okay, I ran out of breath there. What should I do now? Go back to a few letters or a few <coughs> words and then start again. So here in a good case is فدمدم. So we say, uh, I stopped here, Rabbuhum, so I'll go back to rewind if you like to, Fadamdam. Fadamdam alayhim Rabbuhum bithambihim fasawaha. I want you all to stop there as well, Rabbuhum, and then go back, Fadamdam. Okay. Fakadabuhu fa'aqaruha, Fadamdam alayhim Rabbuhum. فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسَوَّاهَا وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقُبَاهَا وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقُبَاهَا Okay, so in today's episode we did a very simple and easy rule and that is the solar and lunar letters. The solar letters are those letters which when they occur after the alif lam participle, then you will drop the lam sound and immediately join the alif to uh, the solar letter. And the lunar letters are the exact opposite, that when they occur after the alif lam, you will say that letter along with the lam sound. And this is the rule, as I said, alhamdulillah, most of the Muslims know this. This brings us to the conclusion of today's episode. Inshallah, we hope to see you in our next episode. Until then, assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته